The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets slightly in the green to kick things off. you got the S&Ps right now up by about 8 points, trading at 49.70. You see the dip lower yesterday, quite a bounce from the 49.40 area up to 49.75, and we're within about 5 points of that area. We were down about 49.55, so negative by about 7 points Early this morning, 7.30, not that early, right? I was up looking at the markets. NASDAQ 100, we're approaching almost the highs of Friday right now, 17,746. You were down low yesterday, about 200 points lower almost, 17,558. You're positive by about a quarter percent in the NASDAQ 100. Dow, barely in the positive this morning, 38,475. You're positive by 12 points, and you get the Russell. I mean, look at this Russell, right? Lower lows, lower highs, Russell, the only index right now in the red, negative by two points at 1942 you jump over to bitcoin up five hundred dollars at forty three thousand and seventy five crude catching a small bit we hit a price of seventy one forty one yesterday it's talking about maybe we get into the 60s yesterday not quite that acceleration we're up a bit this morning crude up half a percent seventy three fourteen you jump over to the gold contract we were down at lows at about 2030 yesterday you talk about Volatility on yields, volatility on the dollar index, right? You get volatility on commodities when that's what happens. Gold this morning up by about $3 at 2046 And you jump to the all-important notes and bonds. You got the 10-year up by four ticks right now. And you're talking about a yield on the 10-year at 4.15%. A hair under that number, but you got to round it. 4.15, the yield on the 10-year. We get some Fed speak this week. And we don't have a meeting until March 20th. So we're going to get, remember, we're, we're going to get all of the January data. Now, we just got January jobs on Friday, okay? But we're also going to get, whether it's consumer prices, right? Price consumer, um, PCE. And then we're going to get all the data for February when we get into March before that meeting. So we got a lot of data ahead of the March meeting. But boy, that Friday data point, going to be tough to forget that as we look at the jobs on in January, and we go forward from there, but nonetheless, 4.15%. You jump over to the dollar index. As I mentioned yesterday, quite the acceleration to higher price in the dollar on higher yields. You hit 104.60. We're just off that price level right now at 104.46 on the dollar index. Now, just jumping around before we hit some of the stories. Excuse me, you check out gold, right? Gold is where you're trading at at Thursday. Excuse me, Thursday's lows, Wednesday's lows, Tuesday's lows, Friday's lows. Interesting, right? You're bumping up just to that area. I was looking at this this morning, okay? Put it up on whether it's just a 15-minute chart going back five days, a five-minute chart. We'll take it back a little bit longer. Gold, right at those levels. Again, the lows of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, okay? You compare that to the dollar index, the highs of the dollar index back then were 103.50, Right. Look at this. Now, when the dollar trades higher, gold should trade lower. OK. Look at where gold was. And the dollar were in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you blow through that area. We're at one oh four fifty, essentially, in the dollar. And meanwhile, you have the gold contract that you could make the case that should be dramatically lower. Right. Because look at where the dollar is compared to where the gold contract is. Gold is trading at the same price as you were basically Tuesday at 10.30 in the morning, within a few dollars of that price level, okay? And meanwhile, Tuesday at 10 in the morning, you had the dollar at 103.43. So you've had the dollar index rise over a full point over that time. You've had gold sustain that level. So what happens when you get the do dollar index potentially pulling back? I'm going over that scenario because we know they're related but it's important to look at that relationship, how it's reacting, because I feel like no matter what we're talking about here, listen, the chairman might have sounded, and he sure did, and I can't wait to talk to our man Kevin Hinks after the first break. 
Uh, very fortunate to get him three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we haven't talked to him since the jobs number, since the chairman, since the chairman on 60 Minutes. Can't wait to get his take. Always interesting. Because when you look at, he did say the chairman, that basically everybody agrees that it's going to be time to cut this year. Okay, well, that's like the lowest bar possible for cutting, right? We're February, the start of February, we have 11 months in the year. People thought they were going to start cutting in about six weeks. And he says, hey, everybody agrees that we'll get a cut in the next 11 months. Okay, the bar is as low as you can. But as they say in life and in business and in many things, folks, you want to under promise and over deliver. OK, and that's the business the Fed is going to try and be in if they can. They don't want to set the expectations too high. We saw the jobs number on Friday. Point being, eventually we're going to get those cuts, I think. OK, we are at five and a half percent. Even if this market marches forward, we have six good months of data. OK, the job data we just got on Friday, it's good data. But the wages went up 0.6 percent. That is not good data when it comes to the inflation front. I think we're going to get some cuts throughout the year. Nobody knows for sure. Everybody has been wildly wrong on everybody. But on Wall Street, analysts, the Fed, many have been wrong. So anything could happen. OK, and you want to you always want to keep those tail risks intact. Now, listen, if you have a tail risk like the end of the world is coming or something like that. And, you know, if the end of the world is coming, what are you doing worrying about your stocks? All right. To a certain degree. But you do want to have those tail risks as in no matter how confident you are. You always want to try and have the ability to say, what if things do go wrong? Plan for those probabilities that are outliers, that are tail risks. So anything can happen. But I think we're going to get some cuts, man. OK, I think we're going to get some cuts. We are at five and a half percent. They can make a very real case that they can prob probably go down to five. That's two cuts. They could go down to four point seven five percent and still be fairly restrictive. That's three cuts. When you get those cuts, you're probably going to face some heat eventually as we've now recoiled a bit at four point one five percent. When the 10-year was sitting at a yield of 3.8%, okay, very difficult to imagine the possibility that you get a rapid decline in the dollar and a rapid decline in yields. Well, we've got a little pop now. We're up from 3.8. We're at almost 4.2% right now. That's 40 basis points on the 10-year in the span of a heartbeat, basically, in terms of the time frame you're dealing with. Now the expectations are a little better in terms of you do have some possible room when you take a look at this dollar index on a little bit of a longer term basis. We are approaching that 618, folks. Got to love Fibonacci's, man. I don't know how they work. They're pervasive in life and in the markets, folks. Whatever it is, that golden ratio, I don't know how it works, but it's everywhere. It's got to matter to some degree. We're coming up to that 618. 104.74 is that price point. Look where we're back to, right? Look at what we've done. Uh, eventually, folks, I think we will see some weakness, even as the market just plows higher, okay? The economy is remarkably strong, but eventually those yields will weaken a bit. We're at 4.15%, and even if they're just a bit, look at the recoil we've had in the dollar index and think how well gold uh, has held up. I know, it, like, kicking off with gold, man, my dad's got the gold report. I might be a little biased, but it is remarkable that you are getting a consolidation right now in this gold contract. Where are you consolidating? You're consolidating right at the highs of May, okay? You take out that tail we got on a Sunday night futures run, and you basically have a consolidation between nice round numbers of 2,000 and 2,100. We're right in the middle of that. And then you compare that to the dollar index. Looks nothing like it, man, okay? So what does that mean? Very possible that if you do get some pullback in yields, maybe we do get some cuts, no matter what happens. Remarkable how well gold is holding up when you look at the dollar. Uh, our man Steve Rhodes, he looks at gold and some other currencies sometimes. I'm sure it's doing pretty well because the dollar is uh, pretty strong. And even with that, gold holding up. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We're looking at equities. Don't go away. And we're talking to Kevin Hicks. looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by eight right now. NASDAQ positive by 45. You get the Dow positive by 15. To talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the Schwab Network with your program, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team, they break down the market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. If you've never checked up the checked out the program, they usually set up three hypothetical trades, all of them involving options, all of them involving defined risk. I've learned a tremendous amount myself over the years listening to Kevin and the team. I encourage you to check it out as we're in earnings season. Kevin Hinks, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since last Thursday. Boy, a lot has happened in this market since then. Uh, good morning, Kevin. What are you looking at this morning, man? Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, you're right. A lot going on here. And, you know, it's almost like the economic data because of the meta news and the, the move in. So I think at the end of the day, Tommy, for your viewers, when you see things all over the board, all over the place, like, like you said, well, how can you get your bearings? And the, I think the key is focus on the fundamentals, which is, it would, you know, the, the late mid last week, last Thursday, the ten year yield was three point eight one percent. It's now four point one five. Uh, last week, middle of last week, pre jobs data, the dollar was one hundred two ninety. Now it's one hundred four fifty. So, look at the chart of the fourth quarter last year, October to the end of the year. You, you saw the dollar lower. You saw yields lower and stocks rally. Now we're in earnings season. So you can get some one-off events, but you've got a higher dollar, you've got higher yields, and stocks are going to struggle without some great news. Just so happens, you've got some great news in some of the names, Tommy. 
It's a great analysis, man. I was jumping through the charts on the Thinkorswim platform as you were talking about it there, and you almost beat me to the question just in terms of, man, what a remarkable move, and we all saw it up here in the Thinkorswim platform. Yeah, I got a 113 handle on the price of the 10-year, and we're sitting with a 110 handle, and that was 113.06 uh, when you referenced the, the yield, almost approaching 3.8% on Thursday. Just like that, we're at 4.15%. Uh, of course, you had the chairman out there speaking on Wednesday, and we had the jobs number, of course, on Friday, remarkable number. And then you have the chairman out there again on 60 Minutes, Kevin, kind of reiterating, if not even maybe a little bit stronger about what he was talking about. You know, it's the million dollar, billion dollar question, but I just want to get your analysis in terms of are you trying to estimate where that Fed might be? I know you have the phrase, I think it's something like stay near term, if you can tell those listeners. I love that phrase, stay near term, don't go too far out in the future. And we're kind of dealing with that right now. But are you looking to May? Are you looking to June? Are you trying not to figure that out? Where is your brain right now with how you look at this Fed when you, the chairman, he just uh, surprised the markets at least a little bit, and he might be right on the case after that jobs number on Friday. But how are you looking at all of that conversation as we, we go forward and the market tries to figure out maybe rate cuts aren't coming just yet, but but I think they might be coming. Where, where's your head on that? It's a big, you know, just well, uh, would love Tommy, to get your thoughts. Certainly yeah. a, there's certainly a lot of people adjusting their expectations where they think interest rates are going to go. Goldman Sachs had a March uh, rate cut. America had a March rate cut. Obviously, they've got to move that back. But I mean, the problem is the data keeps coming in strong. The ISM number, the PMI numbers we got yesterday were strong. Prices paid higher. Wages, the last two months, so year-over-year wages uh, in the jobs report, 3.9% to 4.5%. I mean, it's going in the wrong direction. And so I think there's big problems in terms of the economic data either plateauing or reigniting on the upside. And that's what Jerome Powell has to deal with right now. We're going to get a idea out next week, and we'll certainly be able to deal with that. But, you know, good data is okay as long as the inflation out now down with that wage data. That was, that, that was not great. And you saw the move in yields. You saw the move in the U.S. dollar. So, yeah, the, I, I think this whole inflation discussion is not over yet, Tommy. Yeah, and I think the chairman would agree at this point. One of the quotes I heard on 60 Minutes, he said something like, you know, we got to get to the point where nobody thinks about inflation. Nobody's like worrying about inflation. Um, and it's not even on their minds. And I found myself going, whoa, that that's like seems like it's like super far away because it's all anybody's yeah. talking about. Um, and so we'll see where we go, man. It's a wild market to say the least. We're almost at 5,000 in the futures. We just missed it by about a couple points on Friday. But boy, we go forward. Some gangbuster earnings you mentioned last week with Meta, and we keep going throughout this week as well, Kevin. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up today at 12? We're, talking, we're, we're going to talk about three good names today. We're going to talk about Uber and their mm. earnings coming up before the open tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about Chipotle. And their earnings coming out after the bell today. And then in our first segment, we're going to look at Tesla. And Tesla now officially in old. Up, oh, you broke up a little bit. You there, Kevin? Oh. Did I lose you? I think I got you. You there, Kevin? Yes, I'm here. All right, I got you. Uh, finish that Tesla thought for me, if you could. I just missed the end of it. You're going to be talking about Tesla. Uh, go ahead, finish that one. I just missed the end of it, please. Tesla is now officially in oversold in terms of the RSI. So we're going to look at Tesla. We're going to talk about it. We're going to trade it today. Oh, Tesla, man. It's everywhere right now. Elon, he is everywhere. And then you talk about great stocks, man. Uber and Chipotle. Um, can't wait to hear the conversation on those at 12 o'clock. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. Three great stocks, man. And, yeah, check out these charts, right? Uber, to the moon, baby. Look at this chart, right? You kick off 2023 at about 25 bucks. You're almost three times that price right now. You're pushing 68.99 pre-market. You're trading at 69 dollars and change. You back this thing up, all-time highs right now for Uber. Quite the resurgence. And then, yeah, you look at Chipotle, right? Look at this thing, all-time highs. Quite a tear that you are on. Now, how about you back this thing up? Remember when they had the E. coli scare, right? 
Remember that? What year was that? Had to be down here, right? When this thing was at 270 in 2017. That's probably when it happened. Yeah, you were up to 800. You pull back to 270. COVID spikes you to 438. And this thing is just through the moon, man. 2470. But guess what? Expectations, folks. Okay? Expectations. Chipotle has risen $700 from where this thing was trading at the last time they came out with earnings. This whole market right now, as Kevin referenced even, right? NASDAQ 100. I think you're up 26%, 27% since the October low. Wild numbers when you look at where we are, where we've been, where we've come from. And yeah, to put it lightly. All right, we jump around. Let's jump back to yields as we come into the opening bell. You got the 10-year right now. There's your longer-term basis. Backing off a bit, we put it back to a shorter term on a five-day. 10-year up about four points. We're sitting at 4.15. As Kevin said, 3.8 to 4.15. Seems like we got a little bit more room for risk and reward on both sides right now. At 113, when you had the 10-year at a 3.8, for those betting on yields going down at 3.8, folks, here's what you have to consider when you do that, okay? Yields were above 5% at one point. They were at 3.8% as of Thursday. That's a point and a quarter. That is five cuts from 5% to 3.8. Five cuts. Well, geez, how do you go lower in yield? Well, the answer was no, we didn't. Risk. We're back to 4.15. We're coming back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter Market Insights firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by 11, NASDAQ 100. You're up by 60, Dow off by nine, Russell off by four. And let's jump around this market, see how we're opening. Microsoft, biggest company in the world, up by about a quarter percent to kick things off, 406.70, up by $1.21. You jump over to Apple, basically flat, 187.55. You jump over to Amazon shares, up by about a tenth of a percent, 170.62 for Amazon. We jump over to Meta, up 1.6% today at 466.75 you talk about an acceleration last week right remarkable we jump over to tesla they're going to be talking about tesla coming up on fast market at 12 today man watch out for this equity folks kevin mentioned they're in oversold territory but boy this is a stock on its own as in it's got an it's this does not trade with the market right and there's a lot going on in this market in this stock i've talked about it a couple times and the one thing i will say is if you are in this equity, and this is where I talked about kind of planning for those tail risks, right? <clears throat> Maybe you risk a certain amount of capital because yes, okay? It's almost like trading in crypto at this point. The volatility you're getting is very attractive, right? You just traded from 265 down to 180, folks, okay? I just saw a stat. Let me see if I can pull up the tweet that was that NVIDIA has added in the last three months, I think it said, I'm going to find it here, the market capitalization of Tesla. I mean, it's it's a different world going on, folks. Yeah, this is it. Let me pull it over. Here we go. From Stock Twits. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. NVIDIA, over the last three months, check this out, okay, has added Tesla's entire market capitalization to its valuation, which is over $550 billion now. This is the run for NVIDIA versus we just covered. Tesla's going from 265 to 180. And listen, Elon takes a lot of grief for buying t Twitter, right? What a foolish decision it was to buy Twitter, yada, 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 all this stuff, all the money he's losing. Folks, he was selling Tesla shares at this point on the chart, okay? That's not by mistake. And be aware that even Elon was like 350, 400. I got to gotta use this money for something else probably could have done something else besides Twitter, maybe. But, you know, the richest person in the world controlling the biggest bully pulpit in the world, not a coincidence as well, folks. I'm actually surprised more people with Elon's wealth don't try and spend inordinate amounts of money for that type of control of speech, which is kind of what's going on as Twitter, Twitter devolves at this point. But I'm surprised they don't, because that money means nothing to him. And now he, he basically is the arbiter of speech on Twitter. And I know that he proclaims that um, it's all free speech, but if you're paying attention, man, he's disabled community notes on some of his own posts now. Um, there's a lot going on there, but don't think it's my mistake. He was selling, and be aware, to get to the final point, there is a substantial tail risk, okay? It's not like a one in a million type tail risk, okay? There is a substantial tail risk that Elon says that um, he's going to step down as CEO and be involved as a as a consultant, you know, whatever you want to be. He's not going to be away from that company as in having no input. But I think he's going to want more shares for whatever company he's going to dig his time into because he knows that shares are where you get the run up for real wealth. And he did it with Tesla um, as an owner and as a CEO, even though that retroactive pay cut. Just be aware, OK, there are news even in an oversold basis where this thing is still trading at multiples that are very lofty. And if you get that news, and it could come, folks, I'm telling you, it could come. Um, wouldn't be surprising if he wants to free up some of his time with some of his other ventures that he has more control over, the likes of SpaceX, um, the boring company maybe, but SpaceX in particular, right? Tesla shares down another three quarters percent off a of buck 35 at 179.93 this morning. All right, we got to talk about China. Let's talk, talk a little China. Now, you got Xi out there. Look at these last couple of days. You get a little sell-off on the open. Just jumping around to Alibaba, one equity. And they have their numbers out, I think, this week as well, next day or two. So be careful there. Alibaba up 2% today. You go from 72, opening yesterday, up to a high of 75. You open at 78. We're trading lower, though, right now on the open. You got the news out there this morning that President Xi is going to discuss stocks with regulators as the rescue bets build. Authorities work around the clock, people familiar say. Well, I mean, it's a dictatorship, folks. The fact that they're talking about all the authorities are working 24-7 from a dictatorship. I don't know if that's exactly what's going on, Chinese, but I'm pretty sure it's a nonstop flow of news right now. Chinese stocks rally across the board with small caps leading. I think we have the Hang Seng 
up about 4% last time I checked. Let's check in on it. What are we sitting at? Asia right now. Yeah, Hang Seng, 4.04% is the number that you got on the Hang Seng out there. So huge day on the Hang Seng. Shanghai up by 3.2%. So markets are paying attention to this. That's for sure. And anticipation. Now, what to do is be careful here, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news. This is the rumor part of what's going on. Chinese stocks extending their rebound after regulators uh, plan to update the top leadership on market conditions. And yeah, you just got an acceleration. Unclear whether any new support measures will come, right? Traders are hoping this time it will be different. Hope. Trading off hope. Be careful trading off hope, folks. All right? You got a very long-term projection. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably a decent bet, man. You know, that's, that's the real deal. That's what I would say. Let's see, how far back does this one go? That doesn't go back all the way, right? No, that one only goes back to 2015. But even that one, you see that you're under where you were in 2015. But I want the ETF, I think. Or where was I yesterday? Is that it? No, the ADI sponsored. That's what I'm looking at that brings you all the way back. I mean, longer term, now listen. I'd say you're probably better off finding a way to invest in India right now on a longer term basis. Trump gets back in, he puts in 60% tariffs. I don't understand how this is all going to go in terms of the inflation raging and Trump is going to solve inflation by also tackling the China dilemma with 60% tariffs. You know, I don't understand that relationship. But on a longer term basis, man, yeah, you know, even technically speaking, right? Look at this chart. You're right back to the lows. What if you said to somebody at the high of 2018, you know, I'm thinking about getting into the Hang Seng. But I think I'm going to wait until I can get back in at the 2009 lows of around 10 bucks. That's where I'd be a little bit more comfortable. I think seems things seem a little bit lofty at $27, right? Well, that's where we're sitting at right now. So risk reward basis, yeah. But again, this is one of those deals that can you even see the bounce on this equity? No. What is this? Is this the Hang Seng? I feel like it is, but this is not behaving in the way that it should probably behave. Yeah. I better make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Well, let's just go back on this one. All right. Can you even see the bounce that's going on? And this is the Hang Seng. Okay. We're back to the lows of last year. Uh, so be careful on that. But we're getting some news that the flow continues. Okay. Let's jump over what else we got going on. DocuSign. 6% of its workforce is what they're going to cut. Seems like it keeps coming, man. Interesting, right? We get 353,000 jobs added, but there's plenty of companies that are cutting. They had 7,300 employees as of the end of 2023. So what are you talking about? 400 employees, something like that, right? Yeah, what would that be? 10% would be 7,300, so 6%. No, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, 10% would be seven, 730, excuse me. So about 400, something like that, 6%. So far this year, 32,000 tech workers have lost their jobs. I mean, those are some high paying jobs probably. But it goes deeper than that, because that's 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 less than one tenth of the jobs that we had just added in the month of January, to put it one way. Snap, 540 employees, right? They go through some of the list. But nonetheless, we take a look at DocuSign as we come into this break, folks. DocuSign right now, down 6%. Stay tuned. We'll finish up this conversation on the other side. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. Dow catches a bit up 120. We got the S&Ps up 11 right now. You got the Russell up by 10. We got a resurgence. Check that out. That's a minute chart. Let's put it on a five minute chart. But you see the acceleration, man. Russell just popped. I mean, the Russell is bonkers percentage wise, folks. The Russell just went up a full percentage point in the first 10 minutes of trading today. Phew. Volatility. You talk about it, man. You jump over to the Dow quite a bit as well. Again, one minute charts look a little bit while when you put it and you get that type of an acceleration but we're up about 150 points right now in the dow up to 38,584 markets in positive territory we jump around gold up by about two dollars 2045 right now we jump to silver slightly in the red let's go back to a five minute those one minute charts jump around a bit for me and then we get to yields a little bit higher price lower yield right now and what are we sitting at we're sitting at 4.14 the yield on the 10-year okay what else we got to talk about right now Let's check out, check out Eli Lilly. In the world of increased expectations, they still beat. Check out that weekly, man. The holy grail, weight loss drugs. They're pushing Eli Lilly higher, up by 2.87% today. And there's your headline right now. Eli Lilly results blow past estimates on strong zip pound and surging Manjaro revenue. Yeah, that's the quarterly, quarterly results of the first to include sales of zip pound which won FDA approval in early November out there. And um, for its blockbuster diabetes treatment, Monjaro. So weight loss drugs, diabetes treatment, those two are related, okay? Um, and boy, you talk about a sweet spot to be in when it talks about drugs for things that are affecting Americans, especially weight loss and diabetes. And as I said, both of them are related, man. It'd be interesting to see if the weight loss drug works in longer term basis, will it eat, in, eat into their diabetes drug? Because most people, not most, more people will not need diabetes treatment if they're losing weight technically, right? And I'm not talking about the stock price right now. That's far into the future, folks. But it is interesting when you think about it in that perspective. Zepound, $176 million in sales in the fourth quarter. I just said, what are they? That's, that's remarkable. Um, yeah. They're looking for about a billion dollars in the first year for that drug, man. Remarkable. 249 was the earnings. They beat in a big way 9.35 billion. Net income, 2.19 billion dollars in 90 days. Pretty remarkable, man. Full year adjusted earnings, they're talking about 1220 to 1270 and revenue of 40 plus billion dollars. The market was looking for about 1234 and 39.38. So 
my expectation here is they set the bar low and they're gonna they're gonna beat it and the market's figuring that out. I mean, they just beat on revenue. They're looking for a billion dollars on revenue on this drug, and they barely are above the range, right, of where the market was looking. I bet I bet they're gonna come in higher, man. Weight loss drugs, man. Come on, that is like the holy grail in America, unfortunately. So, all right, we gotta jump to Boeing. Interesting one out here from Bloomberg. Um, when when journalists sense blood. They strike. Boeing's next crisis. It's like they, they can't go a day without a, a negative Boeing story, right? This one not even having to do with some of the planes. This one's just eaten into them, and it's probably right, though. Their next crisis is they're going to have to deal with pay raises, like many other companies. Um, machinists, inspired by the auto workers, seeking a 40% raise. Well, what I can't wait to see is who's going to get the blame for why they're drilling the wrong holes or stuff like that. Right. Let's check out Boeing shares. We'll jump back to that article in a moment. Uh, Boeing down with the market right now. Barely. I mean, the market, I guess, is in positive territory, though, as it catches a bid right now. You got Boeing basically flat right now at 206.13. You traded to a low 198 prior to their earnings almost a week ago. And yeah, it's just talking about that uh, the labor chief, quote unquote, doesn't want to strike. But there's a but there. We're willing to do it. This one's going to get interesting, man. Um, they're not going to get a lot of patience when they're pushing out planes if somehow anybody thinks that the responsibility falls on the workers. And I don't know where it falls. Nobody really knows where it falls right now, probably except some people maybe in regulation, maybe within the business, maybe within the suppliers or something like that. But, yeah, Boeing's largest union, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Space Workers, is still smarting over a 2014 deal that sacrificed pensions, locked in minimal raises, and tied the hands of activists for a decade. So they're coming for it, man, okay? They they probably think that they didn't get a fair, fair deal 10 years ago. And if you didn't get a fair deal 10 years ago, man, then boy, you are hurting right now because we all know what, the, what, ha what has happened to the cost of living over those 10 years. They're talking about a 40% pay raise over three or four years, emboldened by the labor movement and a scarcity of qualified aerospace workers amid pressure on Boeing to stabilize work on in its factories. I mean, yeah, can you imagine if they're going to be dealing with a strike on top of everything else going on? Uh, not very easy sitting in the C-suite on Boeing right now, and maybe that's their fault, okay? I'm not, I got no sympathy, man, for the C-suite in Boeing right now with what's going on, but boy, can't imagine trying to deal with a labor crisis on top of everything else going on. So what happens? Are you really going to, I mean, imagine that pressure, right? A negotiation is pressure. Who has the leverage in a negotiation? That's always the key. And that's why I'm always, this whole debt deal, it's great that we can make deals when we have to raise our debt. But the negotiation tactics of either side sometimes, okay, and this time it was Republicans or is, isn't, the only negotiation like leverage you have is a default, well, the negotiation right here, man, there is huge leverage because the workers are saying you really want us to go on strike with what's happening. Negative stories every single day about Boeing. And now you got your workers striking. You can't even make planes when you have workers on the line. There's no way they can bring in replacement workers. No way. Are you flying on Boeing planes if they tell you they get all new workers putting them in? Right. Imagine the stories written about that one. So then it comes down the line. Do you have to give them the money you want? Well, geez, if you give them the money you want, you know you're going to pay a price on the equity as well because costs are going to go through the roof. You're already dealing with a potential demand problem, right? Um, so so they're going to have some issues. They're going to be dealing with those. And, yeah, they probably have um, the money to get it done. And, yeah, they basically are a monopoly, and that's the reason why they're going to be around, though, too, Duffy, to put it, you know. And America needs a plane maker. OK, so they're not going to let it go out of business. You got Airbus and you got Boeing. Airbus is the European company. America needs a company that builds planes, too. There's no way they're going to allow the only company in the world to exist to build planes being a European company, Airbus. OK, so keep that in mind as your backstop to that equity. But boy, they got some issues, man. And when you look at that, when do the talks start? In a month. <laughs> I mean, this is just quite a headache when you look at what's coming on. And I hadn't seen that one. Right. A 10 year grudge. Look at that. Right. The tactics Boeing used a decade ago to rest pension concessions and limit pay increases to less than 1% on average. Can you imagine walking into that room as a worker? You haven't seen them in 10 years. I mean, I know I'm, I'm hyping it up and I'm exaggerating in a bit. But who has the leverage there, right? Who's in the right? Because you want people want a, a fair deal, 
okay? And you know that when those negotiations kick off, man, and the workers say, hey, thanks for that 1% raise over the, the last 10 years. That was great. We're doing phenomenal. You know the conversation starts with, we're due. We're due right now. We're going to get ours. And if you don't give it to us, we're going to make your life a living hell by striking in the midst of a crisis this company uh, can't get past right now. I'm going to finish up with this because they talk about what they did in the last 10 years. And listen, it's a negotiation, right? 10 years ago, they had the upper hand. It's not the case right now. So be careful on Boeing shares as you're going to start to be headlined with this. In other Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. S&P's up by eight. As that 100 turned red, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the market. S&P is basically where we started, up about 10 points right now. NASDAQ 100 rolls over slightly in the red, negative by about 13. We jump around to some of those equities. You got NVIDIA off about 1.2% right now. You jump over to Apple, slightly in the green. Microsoft shares slightly in the green as well. Amazon down about half a percent right now. And we jump to New York Community Bank. So it's an interesting read out here from Bloomberg talking about Tense talks with the watchdog led to the moves that rocked the market. You also had a couple executives stepping down last year. One of those, um, the chief risk officer, I believe. Yeah, two senior executives left their post in the months before the bank unveiled those measures. This is the New York Community Bank when they recently came out, cut their dividend, increased the loan loss 
provisions that they had in there to almost 500 million. Market was looking for like 50 million. Chief Risk Officer Nicholas Munson and Chief Audit Executive Megan Belfinger, they were up on the website as of November or just October or something, then they were gone a month later. So be careful, man, um, for especially that equity, that bank, as well as maybe a couple others out there as well. All right. And not to get too political, man, but it comes up. It's from the journal. And I got to throw it out there, man, because of all the politics going on. It's February 6th, folks. Hopefully things do not pause and that we can't even pass bills in the last year of an election year anymore. This is the most disheartening thing going on. First, it was you can't do the Supreme Court judge. Now it's that you can't literally pass anything for the last year. The amount of garbage out there around this bill, OK, is disheartening. OK, this is an opinion piece from the editorial board out last night from the journal. I'm going to post it in the den, folks, OK, because this is the journal editorial board. Now, listen, you can say whatever you want. OK, um, by any honest reckoning, it's the most restrictive migrant legislation in decades. Folks, I got a three year old man. I want to make sure the country's fine. Everybody does. All right. I encourage you to look for the real facts because our government is just like not able to do anything, which is a real bummer right now. And I'm going to post that one in the den. And let's not let the discourse go bonkers. I'd just like to share some facts about it because it's going to drive the markets. It's going to drive everything right now. And you just want the truth out there, folks. And unfortunately, that's not out there right now. And, you know, you got the editorial board of the journal. And if you think they're a liberal rag piece, then I don't know what else to tell you, man. We'll end on that one. S&P's up by six. NASDAQ negative by 31. Basil Chapman's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Stay tuned. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.